How's everybody doing? Alrighty then, so this is the update which I plan to do for May, but now we're heading into June. And uh, so I'll we'll call it a June update. <laughs> um, so, you know, model railroads, they never end. They, you know, the details go on and on and on. There's always issues. Um, you know, I'll point a few things out that are just put on the back burner right now. Uh, just for the sake of moving forward down to where section two starts. You can see in the upper right hand corner where that little uh, track side shanty is. That's a carryover from Glover Road and then the old growth tree. There'll be a big grove of trees in there. But uh, I just finished painted these barge piles and slabs. Um, so I'll just tell you what I need to do yet here and then I'll jump off the tripod and move all on the layout and just update you and review a couple things. So these barge piles are pretty much done. They're a bit of a bear to do, just like everything has its own experience, right? Um, so these will all get gelled in with clear and a bit of a river current around them, but not yet because uh, I don't like to fix things quickly, uh, as you know. Like this barge slip is a cassette type. It it plugs into a you know the plywood uh, very stiff road bed uh, with a cable, so it's all wired and everything. So you know what I mean. Like everything is built like components. That's the style I like to build. That's the way I was trained, and that's the way it's going to be. So, and I think it's worth the extra effort because when you want to move a layout, as you all know. We always are very optimistic, but then the sawzall comes out and the whole thing gets trashed, right? And how are you going to remove all these components? Like you can't move, like this thing's 10 feet long. So, I mean, how are you going to move this sideways without knocking stuff off? So that's why, or that's the reason for my madness, or why I spend all the extra time. Like all these trees, they're just plugged in with a dowel into foam sub base. Everything comes off the warehouse flats. The only thing that's fixed is the you know first three or four layers of scenery that you see, like you would see, you know, along the shore there, right? Like this is obviously all fixed and that would stay, but all these trees come out, all these components right now. And even if I do put a bit of acrylic resin on these, I'll be able to probably knife them or pop them. So. Because they're all models in their own right. And, uh, you know, you don't want to sacrifice that stuff if you put all that time into it, right? So there's still some details on the uh, barge ramp head here to be done. Which I'll be cycling back as I'm moving forward over to section 2 and coming back. Like, there's winches on here. You know, cable journals. There's a little bit of detail in the front here, which I haven't quite sorted out yet for when the barge or the ramp or pardon me, ferry comes in, it sort of locks in to here. Uh, you can see the towers are based out with the dark umber shadow. I've masked off the, you know, control panels or aluminum, kind of uh, polished aluminum boxes on there. So these get painted white. These are pretty much done here. This is the way they look. They're just this oxide orange, but I didn't make them quite as orange as what I have in photos, but that was due to sunlight and stuff. So I finally settled for the color that they are. So, And then I, I want to leave this wild or loose until I build my barge and ferry, most notably the ferry, because it's got a bow on it. And then I want this glued in place. And then my ferry doesn't fit because this thing's five millimeters out, you know. That's the reason why I do that, right? Like, you know how it is, right? Everything has to be moved. You know, like the model railroads are, you know, they're a challenge. They can be painful. They're also very rewarding, but don't kid yourself. You know, like when you plan a railroad, like even a shelf layout like this, like make sure you count the cost. You know, um, I was going to mention this, but well, maybe I should, but you know, We've all done this where we plan a model railroad in our head, right? We see the whole scene, like the whole layout is in our mind. We get really excited, but we have no plan, right? Like there's no real plan. It's all in our head. And if you want to do that, that's fine. But they almost always end up in failure. They get torn down or they get, or you burn out on them. 
partially due to the fact that you had this, you know, grandiose idea that was fresh in your mind, and then six months go by, maybe a year, and you just burn out and lose interest. You didn't really have a plan. You didn't cut each section into chapters. You didn't draw a plan up. Like, that's why all the masters write the books, right? Like about model railroad planning. Like, that's why they do that. Because they've put their time in. And now they're mature, they're older, they're building their final layout or whatever. And they know how to get to the end. Or at least close to it. And have all the substance to show for it. And I have, like like a book practically on notes just on drawings and sketches and notes and dated stuff just to get this section one done right to a point where you can sort of call it complete and then you can cycle back and do little details and flesh things out you know whoops sorry you know like uh like i would say that this particular section here is you know at a point now where i can feel comfortable with it but I could still come back here. Like I want to put a little sort of residual kind of busted down fence right here. You know, little details that you can come back at your own leisure. You know, when you're in the mood, you want to change up, right? Okay, like that scene back there, like that's all pretty much done. But I could still add some 50-gallon drums, you know, and lights need to be wired. It goes on and on like this, right? But when you're in the reality of the layout of your own making, uh, you know, things never move along fast enough for others, you know. <laughs> but in this case, I've never been really controlled by that or prompted by it because, you know, at the end of the day, I want it to be a certain way. And um, like there's lamp standards, you know, that go along this, this barge slip as well. There's also here, I'll jump off the... Uh, the tripod here and we'll just take a walk along okay okay so you can see I uh, I did the little wind sock here right <laughs> with the uh, 15 knot chop you know <laughs> or whatever but I can bend this down it's on a wire so I can adjust it according to the the wind um, so yeah, so I mean, this is getting very close, obviously, and I'm quite happy with it. And as you can see, um, you know, this is my uh, stub end staging, right, for the shelf layout, like on this end. There'll be a similar idea on the other end, but it won't be like this it won't be a marine waterfront. It'll be more rural, like probably Langley, like out where I live, where I'll probably have a grain elevator there. And then the main just continues on to cassette staging, right? So, yeah, so I'm quite pleased with the way this is sort of shaping up. Um, you know, it's uh, pretty much as I envisioned it. Like, I'll show you a shot of the uh, prototype here if I just get the angle right. Like, what really inspired me and what I built most of this from because I never had drawings, right? I had to scratch up drafts from a you know as a napkin drawing as i as as i call it or as we called it in film in order to build a model to get it started on the sound stage before the art department finally got around to doing things so this shot right here i'll show you the prototype So you can see that, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty good representation of my vision. And, uh, you know, it, uh, like this whole area, like, let me just show you something here too. Like this whole area, like this is 10 feet, right? Like 10 feet by about two feet deep. Uh, you notice the broad curve here. That was important to me to have this prototypical wide curve, like whatever amount of space I had to sacrifice, like this area, this is three feet, like right from here in to the far corner is three feet and then you notice the backdrop is round like notice how there's no corner there see like there's no interruption of the eye as it will transition into the next scene like this is section two here so this will be an old growth kind of the kind of the remnants of an old growth forest because it's everywhere in bc and it's very indicative indicative of british columbia and that's important to me that uh, when you look at this layout, uh, you know it's British Columbia, right? And the waterfront, 
Okay, that's crucial uh, for this layout for me, you know, for the vision that I'm trying to achieve here. So, yeah, so um, notice, like I say, the curved backdrop. I don't know why people don't do that more. Like, it's so easy to do. Like, that board that you see there above axis, like, that's just sitting in there. Like, it's not nailed. Like, it's just pinned with a couple of pins. But you just push the board into the corner. That's all you do. You just push it in and, and just settle for whatever curve it decides to settle out at. And then you just merge another board into it. You can patch it, you know, cover it in mud, do a scarf joint, whatever. Like, I just did a scarf joint. It's in there somewhere. I can't. It's hard to see, but um, anyway, so yeah, so 10 feet, right? So you have this uh, barge slip operation, which goes to off layout staging. And then you have this lead down to the brewery down in here, which I've made some videos on. So there's quite a bit of operations just in this one area. Let me just take you over here for a second and I'll show you again. You know, it's all compressed from the prototype location, right? See? So I love this scene right here. When I come in, I just take a look down there, and it's very much, you know, short line railroad for me. Like, that really pulls me in. And then you just shift over a foot, and look what you have here, see? So that's the beauty of doing a, you know, like marine structure or, or barge service on a model railroad you know you get a lot of rich richness you know uh in a small footprint you know so but she's getting close right i even built like i made these railings out of brass so they have little hooks on them so i got a chain that they have a chain that goes across here you know lots of other little details that i'll be cycling back to do on this but right now i'm starting to think on uh, okay, I just want to mention this too, because uh, like this particular scene here, I'm not fully settled with. There's always, I mean, there's issues like the backdrop. Like, yes, I am thinking of a backdrop painting, but that's way down the road. I don't do anything like that until all the other scenes are basically merged together. Otherwise, it just ends up looking like a hopscotch patch job. And then that's a, a sort of an alley, like roadway. That's the access point to this parking lot, like from the road. It's the only way to get to this parking lot. But I did make a revision though. And then furthermore, I'm going to put a cell tower in here probably because there's all this negative space. There's maybe too much. This is a cell tower from Glover Road, but I'm going to build another one, a CN style one, an older one, all out of uh, angle. It's really cool looking. I think it would make a nice... Uh, feature there just to kind of break up some of this big open space right here. Um, you know, I might even put a taller tree back there in the corner, but you know, that's all sitting comfortable. I can revisit that anytime. So this scene right here, like I've covered some of this, like you can see there's a roadway here. I put a roadway right in here, see? So this is uh, freelance like this, because I got to transition this. Like I say, this is where the module joins along the, the pavement line, right? And I think I mentioned earlier, like the seam comes all the way through right here. There's parchment paper through this whole seam. And then it comes down here and here's part of the well, the seams in here, but it's all like I did it cabinet style, like it fits in nice. It doesn't move, right? And then if I ever have to move it, I can just zip cut this with a Dremel right here. That was the compromise I had to make. You have to make your cut line somewhere. And so this is all foam, but this all comes like, like lifts out, okay? Like this lifts out, see, as a separate component so I can pull it out. If I ever have to move it, everything gets saved, all the buildings, everything. Okay, and then there's uh, going to be a, a, see the road, but it'll disappear over here. I haven't decided, but I cut it off right here, but I'll make a decision uh, what happens here further down, right? And then right in here, if I can just move this car out of the way, or both of them, whoops. Um, so there'd be kind of a creek kind of coming down here with 
I'm really looking forward to modeling this area. And then it comes down, and this would be slightly engineered, just like it is in British Columbia. Like, they do that all the time. Like, fisheries always are on top of development. And this, this is a culvert, so this would be kept active for trout and salmon. Kind of idea, right? But it was engineered when they put the track through. So you'll see things like this in British Columbia everywhere, right? And then where does the water go? Well, it comes down under the trackage through a big sort of culvert, like engineered culvert pipe. And so salmon can come up here and spawn. Yes, they do go up through here. In fact, I have photos of salmon leaping like 20 pound, 25 pound sockeye leaping up into culvert pipes like this to go through to get to the other side of and to spawn. So that's kind of a neat idea. That was the only way I could really justify doing a little water feature in here, which will kind of, uh, I, well, we'll see how that works out. But it's, you know, once it gets all scenic and stuff, it should be cool. And this is all going to be supported with other sized trees all in here. And then, of course, Trap Yard gets built way down there in the far corner where those trees are. That'll be Trap Yard facade. Okay, so that's kind of the update where I'm at right now. And uh, I'll be poking away at this and then cycling back uh, to the barge slip. And then just in closing, there's going to be like all chain link in here. This is all compounded. Like you can't get in here. It's all got security fence, which is really cool. So it'll be a lot of, and two big gates here. And then a little compound in here. And then it goes up over this container as well, barbed wire. You know, it's just other stuff right other details that you just go on and on right and come back and revisit so that's it for the update for river road so stay tuned i have tutorials covering this end of the barge finish as well okay so cheers happy modeling and i hope that you have a great day